In this video, I'm going to go over an example, uh, and with that example, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out quasi-steady state analysis to um, sketch the phase plane for a system that has a slow and a fast subsystem. So um, here you can see I've got the equation x prime equal r squared minus x squared minus y squared, and I have y prime equal epsilon x minus y. So we're going to assume that uh, epsilon is a positive parameter, but much smaller than 1. And because of that, we can see that as long as x minus y is not really large, uh, y is going to be a slow changing variable. And so as soon as we see that there is a slow changing variable, and the other variable, there's no obvious reason to think it's changing slowly or quickly, um, that tells us that we're watching this system on a scale that's fast given what's going on in the, in the system. So that means that um, we have, let's say, a process that happens on millisecond scale and another process that happens on hour scale, and we're counting time here in milliseconds so that we see the x variable change at a reasonable rate when you measure in milliseconds, and the y is barely changing. So let's start off by taking advantage of that structure and say that y prime is approximately equal to zero, which means that y of t, where t is this measured in milliseconds, is always going to stay at its initial condition. Now, obviously, it's not going to stay at its initial condition, but we have to wait until t is ridiculously large to go from milliseconds to days or hours in order to see why finally it changed um, at all. So uh, once we have this fixed y value, we now can write down the x equation. And that's going to be now just a single variable equation where y is a y naught is a constant. And so we can draw a phase line for this. So here's x. And this is just a parabola for any y naught. It'll be a parabola with uh, symmetric about the origin and with a root at minus the square root of r squared minus y naught squared and another one at square root of r minus oh, r squared minus y naught squared. And so just based on the structure of the phase line function here, you can see that we are going to have a stable steady state here and an unstable steady state there. Now keep in mind when I say stable and unstable, these are just stable and unstable when we're focusing just on the fast scale, what is x doing? We haven't let y change yet, and we're going to have to wait a long time to see if, well, if it's unstable, if, if, a, if a, um, a variable is unstable on the fast scale, it's not going to suddenly become stable because there's a way of it going, uh, of, it, of it deviating from the um, steady state. But this one, maybe it's stable in the whole system, or maybe it's got an unstable direction that will be slowly growing. Okay, so um, that tells us a little bit about what the phase plane looks like. And so let me draw this up here. So I'll start drawing the phase plane now. And let me just mark the equations here. The x equation I'll do in green, and the y equation I will do in red. So you can see now that we have a circle is the green null cline, the x null cline, which means solutions have to cross this one vertically because x is not changing as we cross that curve. And then we have y equal x as the y null cline, and that one we have to cross horizontally. All right, so what we've concluded from the phase line is that if we fix a value of y naught and figure out how the solution moves on the fast time scale, let's say we choose a y naught value right here, that corresponds to an initial condition um, here, the x value, and the y value is what determines this parabola's um, shift or its height. And so, but it, what we see clearly is that there's 
rightward movement between the steady states and leftward outside. And that means that from this initial condition, we'll rapidly move to the right. Now, if epsilon is not actually zero, then there will be a slight bow to that line, but we're just going to assume that that bow is ignorable, that we're not losing a lot of accuracy by drawing it as a straight line. Okay, so, um, so that's going to be moving in this direction, and it'll go right out to the steady state. And I can't call it a steady state anymore in the full phase plane, because it's only a steady state of what we call the quasi-steady state uh, of the uh, fast subsystem. So this and this guy here are quasi-steady states of the full system, even though they're steady states of the x equation. And so we have... Um, small piece of our phase plane now. And if we started out with a y naught out here, that would come down towards the same quasi-steady state. And if we start over here, we'd fly away from the circle, and that'll be the same everywhere throughout the picture. All right, so... What this tells us is that any initial condition that starts, let's see, I'll draw this just temporarily here. Any initial condition that starts anywhere in this pink highlighted region is going to converge to the right side of the circle. And any other initial condition out here, down here, down here, will diverge away and go off to negative infinity in the x direction. Okay, so that gives us a rough idea of what's going on, and that's what I call the fast manifold. So everything that I've drawn in so far is what we call the fast manifold. And now we have to figure out what's going on on the slow manifold, which is the quasi-steady state green curve here. And you'll notice the quasi-steady state is the same as the null cline of the x equation, because that's the fast moving equation, or the fast changing variable. Okay, so now what we, we have to do is we have to rescale to be able to watch what's going on slowly, and so I'm gonna define a new time variable, t, sorry, tau, which is equal to epsilon times t, and um, keep in mind that that means that what used to be a derivative with respect to t is now going to be epsilon times a derivative with respect to tau. So the differential equations up here, assuming that these were dx dt and dy dt, oh, well, I won't put in the y equation, um, those are now going to become epsilon x dot for derivative with respect to tau. So maybe I'll put that all in. So epsilon dx d tau, which I'm used to denoting as an x dot, and then that is going to be equal to r squared minus x squared minus y squared, and epsilon y dot is equal to epsilon x minus y. And now you'll notice that these epsilons cancel, so y is no longer changing slowly, and that's because we're watching it on the scale of hours, so it seems to be a reasonably fast rate of change. But now, if you think about this equation slightly different form, x dot divide through by epsilon, I get 1 over epsilon r squared minus x squared minus y squared, and you can see that suddenly x is rapidly changing, and that's because x was uh, changing at a regular pace when time was measured in milliseconds, but now that we've switched to hours, all of a sudden it looks like it's changing extremely rapidly. Okay, so this expression is not um, the one I want to work with here. I just want to point out one thing about this equation. When we set epsilon equal to zero as an approximation, we get back exactly the quasi-steady state that we found as the steady state of the fast subsystem. So here the quasi-steady state crops up again. And what we're interested in using it for is we want to simplify the y equation so that it no longer depends on x. It's just a, an equation in y. How do we do that? Well, we know ge ge geometrically in the plane here, we know that if we're solving the slow problem, we have to be on the green circle. 
because if we're not on the green circle, we collapse rapidly to it. So what that means is we can solve this equation here for x and plug that function of y into the y equation. So what we get is y dot is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus y squared minus y. Now that plus or minus, what is that about? There we have to decide if we're going to be considering the quasi steady states on the left half, that would be the minus case, or on the right half, that would be the plus case. And so um, because the left half is already clearly unstable, I'm going to start with analysis of just the positive case. All right, so what is this, what does that function look like? Um, if I set this equal to just temporarily, I set z equal to the square root of r squared minus y squared minus y, then I can add y to both sides and square to get this equation, which becomes x, oops, sorry, becomes z squared plus 2yz plus 2y squared equal r squared. And this is the equation for a tilted ellipse. So instead of trying to draw it and convince you what it looks like uh, with poor drawings, I will cheat and go over to Desmos and we'll look at um, uh, a plot of this and we'll also do the minus case there and then I'll come back and draw a sketch here that you'll then believe even if it's not beautiful. So here is our Desmos gizmo that is illustrating all of this. So what you see on the left is the phase plane with the circle null cline for our quasi steady state and the red null cline is the y null cline. And what I've plotted here in red and orange, and let me get rid of the orange for now, but you can see now there's my tilted ellipse. Um, so what I'm plotting now is the phase line problem in y. So here's the y axis and I've drawn it this way so that we can line it up and you know in a comparable way across to the phase plane. So what you see is when y is above this value here, I'm I've got negative values. So you have to tilt your head here and consider y being positive this way, y prime is negative in the on the phase line here and y prime is positive on the phase line. So actually you really have to flip this mirror image through the y equal x curve. Now I've shifted the whole phase line picture here to x equal 3 just so that it doesn't directly overlap with our phase plane. And so what you can see is this breaking point here is right at the same level as the intersection of the two null clines, which is the steady state one of the the overall steady states for the um, full phase plane problem. And what this phase line problem or the phase line diagram here tells us is that if we're above the steady state in Y, then Y decreases because we have negative values. We're below the Y axis if your head is tilted. And that means that along this part of the quasi steady state, Y is decreasing and X is automatically going to track it because if you ever decrease y directly in a vertical direction to here, x will rapidly jump back onto the curve. So it actually hugs the curve as it comes down, and we just track the y value of it, which has to be decreasing as you come in to the overall steady state. Similarly, below the steady state value on the phase line, you can see that I, when your head's tilted, these are positive y prime values, which means anywhere on this portion of the quasi steady state, the solutions will be running upward towards the steady state as well. So what that tells you is that you have a fast collapse to the steady state from the left and the right, and a slow uh, approach to it along the green curve. That means that we have to be looking here at a stable node. So, um, and then, okay, let me do a quick description of what happens on the other side. So now this is the phase line for the left half of the quasi steady state and you can see that here from everywhere from the top of the circle all the way down to the steady state on the bottom left these are all negative values of y prime which means that 
the solutions move downward along this side of the curve. And if we go below the steady state, they're positive here, and so these ones come up. So that makes it look like the steady state down here at the bottom is stable, but we know that it's unstable in this direction. So we have solutions coming in along one curve, but then whipping out here along the other. And so that tells us that what we have down here is going to be a saddle. All right, so let me switch back to the pad and fill in those details. So we have the overall steady state here is a stable node because these guys approach this direction, and if I'm on the quasi-steady state already, I'm also approaching it. And that's going to be the case going all the way up here. Here we go up to an unstable saddle, and here we come down to that unstable saddle. And you'll notice there's one point right here, what's going on there? Um, well, if, if, if Y is, is, is got to be increasing because it's increasing on both sides of it, it must be increasing. And that means it's going to move upward into the circle just a little bit. And as soon as it gets in there, it's going to get pushed over to this side. So that part of the quasi-steady state will actually get um, spread around. Now, really, there's a more complicated solution structure in there because solutions have to come in like this and then miss and come up here. So there's something a little bit more complicated going on there, um, but I won't go into those details. Okay, so, and then down here we have a saddle, right? Okay, so I think we've done a complete characterization of what is going on in the phase plane using this fast, slow, quasi-steady state analysis method.